Welcome to the module on basics of interview techniques. Today we will be discussing about uh, the questions related to bitumen in highway engineering. In our previous modules, uh, we uh, already talked about uh, the questions related to aggregate and questions related to soil. What is an interview? An interview is essentially a structured conversation where one participant asks questions and the other provides the answer. So in common parlance, the word interview refers to a one-to-one -one conversation between an interviewer and an interviewee. The interviews usually takes place face-to-face -face or in person. In simple words, an interview is a conversation where somebody is trying to get information from another person about their knowledge on a particular subject. The person asking question is the interviewer and the person answering the questions is the interviewee. Researchers use an interview to ask people to find how they feel or what they know about something. Similarly, the industries conduct interviews to select their workforce in order to actually get the work done in the right manners, whether the competency of that particular person who is being selected is fit for that particular job or not. And there are other types like uh, you can have the leaders being interviewed in order to comment or uh, give their opinion on a particular issues. So today we will be talking about uh, especially the corporate interviews where the corporate industries select people to check their competencies on a particular subject and uh, offer them the right position in the industries. Some of the possible questions in quality control department related to highways are soil, aggregates, bitumen. Today we will be focusing on bitumen Already we talked about soil and aggregate in our previous modules. And in the upcoming modules, we will be talking about the GSB, WMM, and concrete. Some of the possible questions uh, which can be covered or which is being covered in uh, set one of the questions are, what is mean by a prime coat? What is tar? What is the difference between a tar and a bitumen? And what is bitumen? What is meant by a prime coat? A prime coat is an application of a low viscosity asphalt to a granular base in preparation for an initial layer or surface coarse layers of asphalt. A prime coat is a coating applied directly to the prepared base before the additional layers of support or coating. Prime coat asphalt acts as an initial sealer in the asphalt laying process to block the other layers from moisture, dust, and debris before additional coating installations. What is tar? Tar is a dark brown or black viscous liquid of hydrocarbons and free carbons obtained from a wide variety of organic materials through destructive distillations. This is the meaning of a tar. The difference between a bitumen and tar, if you see, bitumens are less susceptible to temperature changes, whereas tars are more susceptible to change of temperatures. That means they are affected more than the bitumen as the temperature changes. Hot weather will soften the surface slow in case of bitumen whereas hot weathers will soften the surface fast in case of tar. Less brittle at uh, low temperatures when it comes to bitumen, but tars are more brittle at low temperatures. Suitable for locations with wide temperature ranges when it comes to bitumen properties, whereas tars are unsuitable for locations with wide temperature ranges as they are more susceptible to temperature changes. What is bitumen? 
Asphalt, also known as a bitumen, is a sticky black and highly viscous liquid or semi-solid form of petroleum. It may be found in natural deposits or may be refined product and is classed as a pitch. The primary use, that is almost 70% of the asphalt, is in road construction where it is used as a glue or a binder mixed with aggregate particles to create asphalt concrete. In set two, some of the possible questions which are being framed in this module are, what is the purpose of application of a prime coat? What is the curing time of a primer? What is mean by a tack coat? And what are the checks and controls required during a prime coat? The checks and controls required in order to conduct the priming applications correctly are primer shall not be applied during a dust storm or when the weather is foggy or rainy. A spray trial to be conducted to fix the speed of the tanker, spray tanker to achieve the spray as per the rate of spray specified within the tolerance given in MORTH. Any unabsorbed material shall be first be blotted with a light application of sand or uh, lime. As far as uh, possible, primed surface shall not be opened for traffic. The speed of the spray tanker shall be generally be restricted to 10 to 15 kmph and care shall be taken to avoid change of drivers. Normally, we keep additional trained driver to cater for the shift changes so that the application of the priming will not get hamper. When the temperature in the shade is less than 10 degrees, the application of the priming or the priming application should be stopped. The purpose of for the application of a prime coat, if you see, the prime coat purpose is to coat and bond the loose material particles on the surface of the base course. The base can be a wet mix macadam or a WBM. Plugs. It can plug uh, capillary voids in the base core surface to prevent the migration of the moistures. It helps to provide adhesion between uh, the uh, base course and the succeeding asphalt courses. And it hardens or toughens the base surface to provide a work platform for construction equipments. If you see the photograph, it acts as a, a waterproof the aggregate between the aggregate base and the subbase. It stops the capillary action of water from the bottom and it penetrates uh, inside uh, the non bituminous layer that is wet mix macadam and creates a bond between the particles. Some of the probable answers uh, to the questions given are if the question asked is what is the curing time for primer, the answer for this question could be. The curing time for primers is at least 24 hours because by this time the moisture and the volatiles evaporates completely. What is meant by a tack coat? Tack coat, also known as the bond coat, is a light application of asphalt emulsion between hot mix asphalt layers designed to create a strong adhesive bond without slippage. Heavier applications may be used under porous layers or around patches where it is also functions as a seal coat. In the third set, some of the possible questions which are being covered are what happens when the spray bar nozzle is set randomly? How to treat the excess tack coat applications? What are the checks and controls required in tack coat application? And what is the necessity of a tack coat? What is the necessity of a tack coat? The tack coat is applied to create a bond between the two HMA layers, also to achieve a uniform coverage. When the HMA first layer is laid and with a, diff, with a gap, if you are trying to apply the second layer of HMA, it is required to apply a tack coat. 
Why? Because if you set the nozzles randomly, that means when the nozzle of the spray bars were set randomly, set at different angles ranging from 30, 60, and 90, the spread directions will shift accordingly and one will find lines as seen in the photograph, resulting in a non-uniform application of tack codes. You see the photographs, the correct specification or the correct opening should be that each nozzle should be opened at a fixed angle matching the other uh, nozzles opening. If you have a second opening uh, nozzle distribution, nozzle opening distribution, if you see, one nozzle is at 60, second is at 90, then nozzle 60, and then that means you have shifted the coverage area, and then the result will be that you will have some areas being sprayed uh, with the primer, and the, some areas will not, not at all be covered with the priming surfaces. You will have lines as shown in the photograph on the right hand side. So to avoid these uh, type of uh, applications, you must ensure that the nozzle has to be at an angle of 15 to 30 degrees and all the nozzles should be at the same angle of opening with respect to the axis of the spray bar. How to treat the excess tack coat applications? The excess tack coat, which sometimes happens to spread across the top of the DBM layer, is required to be treated and cleaned properly by the application of lime or sand or any absorbing material so that the excess application will be removed completely and there won't be any material left over. Because if it is left over as it is and the HMA layer is laid over it, then this will form a weak bond between the two HMA layers and the chances of slippage are high. So the checks and controls which uh, one has to take care uh, as far as the application of tack coat is concerned. Tack coat shall not be applied on a wet prime surfaces. A spray trial to be conducted to fix the speed of the spray tanker to achieve the spray you or the, to achieve the uniform spray as per the tolerance specified any oil spilled over the prime surface is observed the patch should be totally clean and top surface should be removed before applying a tack coat like any diesel uh, or uh, any oil leakage from any uh, equipment on top of a prime coat or on top of the bituminous road that is the DBM, maybe the DBM first layer on which you want to have a DBM second layer and you have seen that due after the completion of a DBM first layer and uh, with the passage of traffic on that, you have patches of uh, areas uh, where some of the oil uh, leakage has been observed, then those needs to be cleaned up properly before application of the tack coat. Any unabsorbed material shall be first be blotted with a light application of either sand or lime or any absorbing material. Uh, the idea is to absorb uh, the excess uh, applications or excess material which is being there on top of the HMA layer and uh, apply a fresh tack coat and then proceed with the new HMA layers. Immediately after spraying the tack coat, uh, laying of as uh, asphalt uh, should commence. Immediately after spraying of the tack coat, generally, like uh, within a period of say one hour or one and a half hours, because you need to give the sufficient curing time. So it's not immediately, but anyway, it takes time to at least an hour's gap is sufficient to make uh, the tack coat ready to receive the new HMA materials. The speed of the spray tanker shall generally be restricted to 15 to 20 kilometers per hour, and care should be taken to avoid replacement of drivers. Generally, uh, the train drivers are being deputed on the spray tanker so that they know what should be the speed by which they have to move and what should be the sequence of uh, movement of the spray tankers and how to make sure that the spraying application of uh, the emulsions in terms of say, tack coat or prime coat is uniform and there is no deviation as far as the rate of spray requirement is concerned. To hit the bull's eye, 
what is required is one should have confidence uh, while attending uh, the interview and to get the confidence he needs to be prepared himself uh, perfectly he has to have the complete uh, in and out of the subject for which he is trying to face the interview he should use his intelligence while answering the questions he should be vigilant while listening to the questions and he has to be innovative in order to give a right answer so that in spite of being stuck in between he should be able to easily move out of the trap by giving the right answers and finally whatever answers he should give it should be logical and that's what the civil stands for to summarize this module we talked about the definition of interviews we talked about the possible interview questions in highway engineering related to the qqc department three set of questions in bitumen were discussed in detail though the questions are specific to qqc but possibly this can be asked to anybody who is facing an interview for understanding his awareness as far as the quality is concerned today we talked a lot about bitumen and in the next module we will be covering gsb or granular subbase material and some typical questions one can ask as far as gsb material is concerned till then tune in for more updates and do watch the upcoming videos to gain knowledge thank you